Welcome to the Words to Empower podcast, featuring Bishop Frank Stewart, pastor of the Acts Ministry in Conway and North Rock. And now, Pastor Stewart. Welcome back to the Acts Ministry podcast. As we talked about on yesterday, the coming of the Lord, we can never, never talk about that too much. And I don't want to be remiss or held accountable for not telling you that the Lord is coming back. I want to talk about something that it, that's in conjunction with that. The Bible says to us in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, starting at 51. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is your sting? O grave, where is your victory? So we know that there is coming a day, as we talked about on yesterday, uh, when the Lord is coming back to receive those that believe in him. There's a day that is coming, and we want to be ready for that day. If we're not ready for that day, we will be all men most miserable. And I want to talk about just the day and time we live in, because I think the problem is we really do not believe God. We don't believe God. Now, we believe in God. Many people believe in God, but to believe God. Now, how are we going to believe God? Well, we have to believe what he has written through the prophets, the apostles, the word of God. And the word of God, if we do our research, will validate itself. It would validate itself based on even, even science. It would validate itself. But not just that. It is a supernatural book. It would validate itself based on the prophecies that we read in the word of God and those that have already been fulfilled in our day and time. Since the Bible was written, the prophecies alone says that the Bible is a supernatural book. Jesus on one occasion said this. I am going to tell you now so that when it does happen, you will know that I am he very important for us to understand very important for us to understand and to know that so uh, if we know that then we will believe God now the Bible says to us in Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 6 it is a very powerful verse and I want to just give you the essence of that it says to us he that becometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a reward of them that diligently seek him that's verse 6 of chapter 11 of the book of Hebrews there's two statements you must believe there is a God many people do that but do you believe God now only way we can believe God is that he has given us something for us to believe he must give us something for us to believe else how can we believe him so we believe that the word of God is the inspired word from God it is God breathed as the Bible says, God breathed, God communicating with us, chose not just a nation, but about 40 writers to convey to us what God has said. Very important that we understand that or else God is not justified in judging us. God is not justified in punishing us or rewarding us because if it's not the word of God. So to believe in God is one thing. To believe God is something totally different. Now, if we believe God, that there is going to be a day on the earth where he's going to rapture us from this planet. And there are so many examples of things that we see where God in the scriptures where people was actually transported. Now, I know we look at science fiction and we see science fiction and and here we are uh 2,000 years later, and we're talking about uh, Scotty beamed me up, Star Trek, and, and or, you know, being transported, and, you know, in that. But 
that is something that is written in the word of God. That is written in the word of God thousands of years ago. Matter of fact, in the first book of the Bible, we see a man named Enoch. Enoch. He was a man that the Bible says walked with God. He walked with God. And because he walked with God, something happened to him. It says, and he was not for God took him. Can you just think about that? In Genesis chapter 5, verse number 23, it says, And all the days of Enoch were 360 and 5 years. That's 365. It's 365 days in a year. It says, And Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. Now, when you say he was not, you have to look at the whole chapter because everybody talks about they lived a certain length of time and they died after a certain length of time. It even mentions it even mentioned Methuselah. And it says that Methuselah lived nine hundred and sixty nine years and he died. So everybody has died up to this point. And then here's Enoch. The Bible says that he was not. He was transported. He did not experience death. He was just taken from the earth and never experienced death. So when we look at what we're even seeing in this world today and we see all the science fiction that we see and we marvel at it and we wonder if we will ever get to a place where we can just be transported from one space to another place and we look at that and we see that it is so familiar now uh, in the sci-fi uh, thrillers and the different things we see on television being able to transport a person from one place to another place but that was happening over close to 6,000 years ago God already knew about this we haven't even come to this level of technology we see it we sit on television and we're dreaming of the day we'll get there but the Bible says that God in the beginning God didn't have to improve it. He didn't have to get to that. He already knew what it took. So in Hebrews chapter 11, verse number 5, it talks about Enoch. It says, by faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him. For before his translation, he had this testimony that pleased God. He was not found. He did not see death. God took him. God took him from the planet. Just took him. Now I think we're more familiar with Elijah that went into the heavens, was transported into the heavens, and and Elijah saw him leave. And even then, we're talking thousands of years ago. Stay tuned for more of Frank Stewart. And now for some special announcements. Thanks for partnering with the Acts Ministries. We value your service and your donations. That's why we've made it easy to make contributions to support our ministry. Simply go to your web browser and click the search bar and type in xministriesonline.org. Then click Donate Online. It's really that easy. For mobile giving, text the amount you wish to donate to 501-302-4242. That's Simple Give. And now, more of Pastor Frank Stewart. And even then, we're talking thousands of years ago. And then, of course, Jesus Christ. About 2,000 years ago, Jesus the Christ, as an apostle who watched him, just disappeared into the cloud. So when you look at the God of the universe, this is not impossible for him. What we are fantasizing about what television that they call science fiction is a reality in the word of God. Very important to understand that. So it, it's, it means something to believe God. It means something to believe that, that God is able to do this. Now, I want to show you, again, I believe people believe in God. I believe there's a vast majority of people that believe in God, but they don't believe God. 
they believe they can believe whatever they want to believe and it'll be all right just think about that i can believe what i want to believe and at the end of the day i am all right well let me let me read something to you from the book of revelation from the book of revelation that i think that all of us need to understand and all of us need to look at and adhere to what the bible says to us uh, and, and this is concerning judgment. Look at this. The Bible says in Revelation, starting at chapter chapter 22, and I want to start at verse number 6. I want to start at verse 6 to keep everything in context. And, and, and listen to what the Bible says. Then he said to me, these words are faithful and true. This is the angel talking to John. And the Lord God of the holy prophets sent his angel to show his servants the things which must shortly take place. Behold, I am coming quickly. Blessed is he who keeps the words of the prophecy of this book. Now I, John, saw and heard these things. And when I heard and saw, I fell down to worship before the feet of the angel who showed me these things. Then the angel said to me, see that you do not do that, for I am your fellow servant and of your brethren, the prophets, and of those who keep the words of this book, worship God. And he said to me, do not, listen to this, do not seal the words of the prophecy of this book, for the time is at hand. He who is unjust, and this is what I want you to get to, this, I want you to see this. He who is unjust, let him be unjust still. He who is filthy, let him be filthy still. He who is righteous, let him be righteous still. He who is holy, let him be holy still. Now, what, what is being said here in the book of Revelation, it is being said that whatever way you die, that's the way you enter into judgment. Whichever way you die, you go into judgment like that. So it says if, if, you, if you lived unjust, you die unjust, you wake up in judgment unjust. If, you've been, if you have been filthy, and that's not talking about physical, this is not talking about physical clothing now. This is talking about your spiritual uh, disposition. This is talking about your your spirit. If it's corrupted, if it's tainted, if it's filthy with sin, then he said, "Let him be filthy still." He who is righteous, let him be righteous still. He who is holy, let him be holy still. So uh, there's no changing in the grave. There's no changing in the grave. Once you die. You cannot change after death. So this is what this is what this says to us. If you die filthy, then 10,000 years after your death, you are still filthy. A million years after your death, you're still filthy. There is no changing after death. Everything that Jesus did was for us while we are alive. It is up to us while we are here to repent it is up to us to do what he's called us to do. repentance is, is the first step and that is to become godly sorrow lord i'm sorry see not that's not by force that's that's not that's not even so much i believe with the fear of judgment of punishment it is when you see the goodness of the lord how good God has been to us. See, the Bible said it is the goodness of the Lord to lead us to repentance, true repentance. I am sorry that I have done you like this. I am sorry that I have been unfaithful to you. So when, when that happens, when that happens, genuine repentance comes. That happens on this side of the grave. It cannot and will not happen after death. If that could happen after death, then everyone would be saved. Because if that happens after death, no need for faith. Because we would see the invisible. We'd be part of the invisible. 
So there's no need to believe God. But see, the problem with that is the Bible says that without faith, it is impossible to please him. So we wouldn't be able to please him because we saw. So it's very important for us to understand that we need faith and to walk by faith. So when we die, we want to be holy. And brothers and sisters, if you're holy when you die, the Bible says be holy still. Now I told you on yesterday, getting in Christ, being in Christ is so important. And, and, and that is something that I think that we've missed, being in him. So when Jesus comes, when he looks at the church, what he sees is Jesus. When he looks at you, he don't see you. He sees Jesus because you're in him. You're in his blood. He sees perfection because Jesus was the sinless lamb of God, the sinless lamb of God. We have to be in him. And if we in him, brothers and sisters, we're going to spend eternity with him. God bless you. We're going to get back on track tomorrow. We're going to start talking about as we count down count down these 40 days and we're going to start counting down and and we're going to start back doing saturday and sunday i believe because you have requested that we we do saturday and sunday so we're going to go back and do that so we can count down these 40 days and lead you to uh the best year in the history of your life god bless you for mobile giving text the amount you wish to donate to 501-302-4242 the Axe Church in North Little Rock is located at 1224 Franklin Street. Morning Glory begins at 8 a.m. on Sunday mornings. Sunday School begins at 8.30 a.m. And for a powerful word, join us at 9.30 a.m. for our morning worship service. Bible study is each Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. At our Conway location, Morning Glory begins at 10 a.m. Sunday School begins at 10.30 a.m. Worship service begins at 11.30 a.m. On Thursday, our Bible class begins at 6.30 p.m. For more information, go to AxeMinistriesOnline.org or give us a call at 501-329-2055. Thank you for tuning in to the Axe Ministry Podcast. The Axe Church is located at 1423 Indian Street in Conway and 1224 Franklin Street in North Little Rock, Arkansas. Tune in each day to hear an inspiring word from Pastor Frank Stewart. Well, friends, that's all of the Axe Ministry Podcast for today. Feel free to go back and revisit and listen to any of the previous podcasts. Until tomorrow, I want you to know if you're not having church when you leave church, you are not having church. God bless you.